With this video, we provide an introduction to a new unit on entropy and the second law. Entropy is concerned with the concept of spontaneity, right? The natural tendency for things to happen. Uh, so, so we're going to see in this video and, and uh, further down this uh, unit uh, how entropy can be used to uh, as a metric for that spontaneity uh, that is, uh, uh, you know, a driver behind uh, everything that happens in the natural world. All right, so let's begin talking about uh, entropy and spontaneity using a couple of very simple examples. All right, so uh, the first one would be uh, uh, this process where I take an object like a marker and I'm just uh, gonna let it drop and uh, that process is spontaneous, right? Uh, notice that the moment that I, that I just uh, release the object, it falls spontaneously without any external aid and ends up in my hand. Now, if you uh, try to see if the reverse process, spontaneous, right, so the, the uh, marker jumping from my hand, in, uh, into, from my left hand into my right hand without any external aid, then you will see that that will never happen, right? That process is not a spontaneous. Right, so, so it turns out that that spontaneity is connected to entropy, and we can actually, if we're able to calculate the change in entropy, we can use a change in entropy to determine uh, that the process from my right hand to the left hand is spontaneous and the reverse process is not spontaneous. Right, so uh, to explain this, um, uh, this spontaneity of this process, what we can actually say is that, well, when the uh, marker is here, it has some potential energy. As uh, uh, the marker is released, that potential energy converts into kinetic energy uh, and right before, or right when you hit that hand, that kinetic energy is actually dispersed by the molecules in my skin that are oscillated. And they absorb all that kinetic energy and eventually dissipate it throughout my hand, and eventually that energy is dis dissipated through space. Right, so notice that uh, the idea there is that energy has a natural tendency to disperse. Right, the idea is that you have energy concentrating in the marker that ends up dispersed throughout space. Okay, and that is connected to the, to the phenomenon of spontaneity and also with entropy. Okay, that's one of the, the first things that uh, we can talk about. Now, the, uh, the reverse process is not possible because what, ha what needs to happen is that that energy that has flowed uh, uh, you know, out into space would actually need to aggregate to concentrate uh, in my hand in those molecules right below the marker and then push it up until the marker jumps, right? So that aggregation of energy that is dispersed is just not spontaneous, okay? Uh, and again, that's something that entropy can, can tell you that. Now, uh, we can also say that naturally there's a tendency of not only energy to disperse, but also of matter to disperse. Like uh, right now when I'm speaking, uh, for every breath, I put about two liters of air out into the environment, right? So those two liters of air under ambient conditions, uh, you know, they put out about a tenth of an allogator number of gas particles in space. Now, uh, when left on to its own devices, that uh, for every breath, those tenth to uh, you know a tenth of the allogator number of particles tend to disperse throughout this room. And uh, they, do, they do so naturally, right? So I could stop speaking, there would be no forces in the room, yet the particles will, will uh, uh, move spontaneously to occupy the entirety of the room. What you will never see, though, is the opposite effect, where uh, those particles that are dispersed throughout the room, all of a sudden, you know, on their own devices, would just aggregate uh, to just two liters uh, right in front of me, right? That doesn't happen. And again, that's because uh, matter has uh, also a tendency to disperse. Okay, so entropy is going to give us a, 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 a metric, a measurement, or an estimation for that natural tendency of matter and energy to disperse. Okay, such that spontaneous processes are those that uh, increase the entropy and, and are those in which matter and energy uh, uh, tend to be dispersed. Okay, so actually that leads, to the, leads us to the second law, the statement of the second law, which simply states that entropy, which is uh, going to be denoted by the letter S, okay, the change in entropy in the universe, right, uh, will be larger than zero if the process is spontaneous, okay, and uh, there's actually a, a second statement of the second law 
in which there are some conditions in which the entropy of the new universe can be equal to zero. Okay, so if it's larger than zero, then we'll say that the process is spontaneous. And if it's equal to zero, we'll say that the process is at equilibrium. And again, we're, we're simply putting here the foundation for this entire unit, and we're going to be doing explicit calculations for the change in entropy in the universe as we move along through the next series of videos. But remember that the universe, in a thermodynamic sense, is divided into two uh, uh, sub, sub uh, uh, divisions, if you want to, uh, the system and the surroundings. Right, so uh, the full statement of the second law taking that into consideration would be that the change in entropy in the universe, which is the sum of the change in entropy of the system and the change in entropy in the surroundings, that has to be larger or equal than zero, and it will be larger than zero if the process is spontaneous, and then it will be equal to zero if the process is at equilibrium. Now, if you do a calculation in which uh, of a particular process uh, and you find that the change in entropy in the universe is negative, then you can conclude right away that the process will not take place. It's not spontaneous. Okay, so that's kind of the power of the second law. All right, so uh, moving forward, the only thing that we actually need to do is define how to calculate this change in entropy because that's, those are the ingredients that we need in order to be able to execute the second law. All right, so uh, we're also going to write here the uh, thermodynamic definition for uh, change, in change in entropy. We're not going to derive this, even though it can be done, but that's uh, beyond the uh, uh, purpose of this course. And we're simply going to write the definition, and in the next videos, we'll actually see how this definition for uh, thermodynamic entropy uh, uh, you know, re uh, reappears, or it can be used in, in actual applied problems. Okay, so uh, the change in entropy then is going to be defined as, as this. In differential form, right, the differential of entropy is simply going to be equal to um, the differential in reversible heat divided over temperature. Okay, so the change in entropy, either in the system or in the surroundings, is simply going to be equal to the integral of differential of, the, of heat if the process were to take place reversibly and that's something that we learn uh, in the first law, divided over temperature. Okay, so uh, as always, do not be intimidated by that integral. It turns out that uh, that integration is very easy to carry out under some circumstances. For example, if the process is isothermal, then that integration will be really easy to, uh, to carry out. If the process, even when the temperature changes uh, for heating cooling processes, it turns out that this is not going to be uh, difficult at all to carry out. Okay, so uh, I guess that this is a good time to uh, stop this introduction and uh, just to uh, and we'll just wrap up uh, with uh, introducing this video and then we'll move on to uh, applications of this definition of entropy. So here's the, the gist of uh, this introduction. Uh, all processes that take place in real life are spontaneous and it turns out that there's a way to predict whether a process that you're thinking about will be spontaneous or not. And that is through use, the use of the second law. The second law uh, employs the concept of entropy. An entropy is kind of a measure of the natural energy of, uh, natural tendency of energy and matter to disperse. Okay, so in the next videos, we're going to see how this definition of entropy plays out in applied examples.